And I ended up on a little island in the Greek, I, Greek uh, Mediterranean called Tinos, T-I-N-O-S. On Tinos, there's a, a little a church. And for the Greek Orthodox, it's like Lourdes is for the Catholic faith. It's a place where miracles occur. And I happened to be there when pilgrims were arriving on this island, I was sleeping under a fig tree on the beach. <laughs> uh, and I would see people going into the church um, in with gnarled limbs, uh, definitely compromised respiration, um, having really major psychiatric problems. And as I watched over the course of a week, I didn't see someone regenerate an eye or a limb regrow, but I did see people that would, were crippled and walked out. I saw people that couldn't breathe and walk 10 steps would walk briskly out. People that were having psychiatric, major psychiatric breakdown disorders come out and be verbal and communicative and interacting with their friends and family. And that for me was mind boggling because that violated everything I had been learning about anatomy and physiology and neurophysiology and immunology. And it just was an aha, which is no, it doesn't have to be that way. It's like the genetics don't determine who we are and uh, our conditions don't have to be uh, lifetime afflictions. So when I came back uh, to the UCSF School of Medicine, uh, there was a, a, a man, Dr. Elmer Green, um, who was head of research at the Menninger Foundation. And he had been studying a number of what he, what we ended up calling adept meditators. So these were people that could inflict pain. They would push bicycle spokes through their arms. They would do all of these horrible things. And he documented that when they were meditating, they did not feel pain. They didn't bleed. They didn't feel pain. They didn't develop infections. And his work was it was kind of controversial, to say the least. And again, this is the early 70s. I've actually seen 90s. that research. I've even seen pictures of the guys with bicycle spokes through their wrists and things like that. Yes. And you've probably seen one from my research. Uh, Could and, be. And, and so he, you know, and he got a lot of criticism, quite honestly. And uh, so I, but I, I was intrigued because I thought, now this is interesting because this helps to explain what I was seeing, which is that the mind held sway over these conditions. And so here was a, the person's mind holding sway over pain and bleeding and infection. So I decided that I, what I wanted to do was do a series of very rigorous experiments that couldn't be refuted. Um, so I did things, so I, I lined up a group of adept meditators, some of whom had been already studied by, by Dr. Green uh, one of them was a man named Jack Schwartz, who is a uh, meditation teacher, Dutch meditation teacher. Interesting story about how he developed his abilities in a Nazi concentration camp. Um, and and basically wanted to know the, the, the criticisms were that these were not normal people. They didn't their nervous system to respond to pain. They didn't bleed normally. They didn't, et cetera. And so what I did is I did a standard bleeding time and they bled when they weren't meditating three minutes. Perfect. They did respond to pain on the EEG and all the other uh, uh, variables we were looking at. So they definitely responded to pain exactly like you or I or anyone would respond when they were not meditating. Big difference when they were meditating. They would do things like you're describing, which is Jack Swartz, as an example, would take a sharpened bicycle spoke and push it through his bicep. Now, that takes a lot of physical exertion to do. So you could see we had we had, you know, this was before the days of multi-channel computer monitoring. These people look like Christmas trees. I mean, there's so many electrodes for the EEG and the electromyogram for their muscle tension, respiration heart rate, blood pressure, uh, and you could see the strain of pushing this bicycle spoke through their arms. Uh, and then when they were meditating, everything went quiet. It looked as though they were sitting on a beach on vacation, totally quiet. The EEG was normal. The respiration was normal. 
the, the muscle tension on the electromyogram was normal. Blood pressure was normal. Peripheral circulation was, was, was normal. And, and we followed them for uh, six months afterwards, see if there was any infection, there was no infection. These were unsterile, by the way. This is, my, my admonition was don't do this at home. 